and we're here outside the Highlands Museum of Childhood, which is actually, as you can probably see, made from a converted railway station. Let's go and take a look inside. Thanks for talking to us today, Jennifer. Um, can you tell us a bit about how this museum got started? Mm -hmm. um, in the 1980s, there was a lady called Angela Kelly who had collected dolls from her family. She was from quite a well-to-do family, so they were beautiful, um, mainly porcelain dolls. And she took these dolls around the local WRIs and gave talks and things about their history. And then she opened a little doll museum in the village um, and she had them in two of her front rooms and she charged 50p or something to come in and look. And in 1989, she was getting quite old and she decided she'd retire. A few local people put together a trust and then in 1992 we opened up here in this location um, and we decided to widen the remit so that instead of just a doll museum it would be about childhood in general in the Highlands. We had the core collection of 600 objects and we started to collect and since then we've now got nearly 3,000 objects including lots of boys toys and more recently toys and games from the 1950s. What would you say it is about um, a childhood in the Highlands that makes it different from growing up to, uh, in any other place in the world? <laughs> Um, I think the rurality and the, the fact that the Highlands was in those days almost Europe's last wilderness uh, is very difficult to get to some of these places and the, the customs and habits persisted, some of them quite primitive customs and habits and primitive conditions persisted well into the 20th century. Well, Jennifer, we've got this fantastic picture behind us, and this is depicting Hogmanay, the yeah. festival for New Year's. Can you tell us about it? Hogmanay, as you know, in Scotland, is celebrated. It's New Year's Eve, and these are called the Hogmanay Boys, and they danced around the roof, <laughs> <laughs> singing and carrying on and making an awful clatter to cast out any evil spirits. So, oh, in so the New the Year, reason. that was the reason they were doing it, and they got rewarded with a dram. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. A dram of whiskey, I guess. Yeah, um, a dram of whiskey. We've got this picture up here. It's about fairies. Can you tell us about yeah. that one? Yeah, this custom actually persisted kind of well into the 20th century, probably into the 1920s and 30s. People believed that if... Um, if your baby was crying and yelling its head off, <laughs> the fairies had come and they'd taken away your baby, they'd stolen it if it wasn't baptised. An unbaptised baby could be pinched really? by the fairies. Wow. And they'd leave a fairy baby, a changeling, in its place. And the way to test this, sounds quite unlikely really, that they would hold the baby in a creel over the peat smoke. Yeah. And if it... <laughs> If it was a changeling baby, it would go up the chimney in a puff of smoke and your baby would reappear. Oh, wow. That's an amazing <laughs> story. And so how quickly... So after... they really wanted the baby to be baptised very soon after being born, in other words. Yeah. To prevent this happening. Yeah, so pretty much the next, yeah. the next week or after yeah. it's been born. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. Absolutely. And you've got a whole section here on, on birth. birth. In so can you tell us about the dress that we can see there? That look, looks like a christening dress or something. Well, it probably is a christening dress, but in fact in the olden days there was very little way of telling because all babies were dressed in long dresses. Mm -hmm. We've had colleagues from other museums who are costume experts and they think it's been a lady's gown cut down okay. every one of these motifs is made up of chain stitches. So it's very fine and very, very delicate Very fine work. muslin, so you can date it to early, mid 19th century. Can you show us these little uh, clips as well here? These are very cute little pieces of jewellery, aren't they? Yeah, they're little, sort of, almost like little gold badges. They would sew them or pin them into the baby's clothing to protect the baby from the evil eye. Oh, wow, they're very pretty though. I mean, yeah. Jennifer, we've got a cradle here and it says 1890, mm. so this is in pretty good shape for being that It old. is very sturdy, even though it's probably seen a, a lot of children in its time. Um, it was considered really bad luck to use a brand new cradle. Why was that? I don't know, they just, one of those 
superstitions <laughs> that persisted. <laughs> and they had a little trick of making it not brand new, that when it would come from the donor to the young couple, they would fill it with uh, chicken's eggs or food or something so oh. that it was being used yeah. for something before it arrived in the house. Oh, that's clever.